morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, how is everybody? Jesus, we welcome your presence here today. We're not alone, we have you, husband. Come on, Jesus is the king. He's the one who was and is, and is to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We just honor you. We bless you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. We just bless you right now. I'm moving something out of my way. Sorry about that, you guys. go that's much better and we're gonna be talking about some subjects today so praise the Lord I'm the head of the emergent stream here and uh, so we're gonna be talking about some stuff so bless you bless you I'm so glad y'all are here bless you I'm gonna go ahead and share this on some of our sites and to some of our people so go ahead and help us out can you do that for me Jesus you are welcome here Help us share. Why don't you do that? Can you help us today? We're going to be talking about some things today. We're going to be talking about Mark Driscoll. We're going to be talking about <clears throat> some things that occurred. So help me get some things shared. Why don't you do that? Help me get some things shared. What do I do to share? Well, you know what you can do to share? You can text it to people, copy the link of the video. So besides copying the link to the video and you can text it, you can send it in Messenger and different social sites out there, okay? You can help people do that, bless you. Uh, keep watching, we're gonna be talking about again, um, Mark Driscoll. We're gonna be talking about James River Church. talking about <clears throat> John Lindell and not talking about people not gossip not that kind of thing okay we're gonna be talking about some things that as a leader I <laughs> obviously need to chime in for our people you know what I'm saying and, and it doesn't matter our opinions about things. Our opinions are supposed to match God's opinion about things. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. Again, I am sharing some of these things to our different places and social sites. Bless you. So good I'm telling you right now he's so good let's see all who's on here go ahead and drop your name in the chat hey there so we've got uh, Apostle Lawrence Rothschild is on here who else do we have we've got several other people on here we've got um, username prophet Saul Kings is on here OG is on here We've got the tutor on here, Tom. Bless you, Tom and Eddie and Christy. Bless you and good morning. Good morning to you. Bless you.
Come on, come on, come on. That's right. Come on. Um, so I'm just sort of pinning some of those comments, looking at some of those comments. Jim and Rena, bless you. Bless you for being over there. Go ahead and comment your city and state. I want to know where you're listening at in the United States. If you're in Canada or any of our, you know, the other countries over there um, on the continent of Africa, you know, are you in Ghana, Uganda, are you in Nigeria, South Africa? Where are our sister churches over there that are in the emergent stream? Or just friends, people who care about us, right? Let me see if my comments are. Yep. Almost done, you guys. Almost. I'm sending this in Messenger, and then I'll be right with you. There we go. And away it is. Yes, yes, in Jesus' name. There we go. getting this shared to my story as soon as I get this little part right here done I will jump back over and we got that section taken care of how are you guys how are you guys again we're going to be talking about Mark Driscoll we're going to be talking about like I said, Mark Driscoll, John Lindell, who is the pastor or the lead head of the James River Church. We're going to be talking about those situations. We're not going to be gossiping or talking about people. That's not the kind of talking about. Okay, my name is Tiffany Blackwell. I am the uh, head here. I am the uh, lead of the, what, the Emergent Stream. And that includes Eagles Landing Church here in Brookhaven, Mississippi, and Eagles Landing Churches all around the place, you know, that are in, we have sister churches um, that have joined with us that are a part of the merch stream and such. And then we also have what, I'm the apostle here, the Prophetic Fools Prayer House. Um, one of the mantles that I wear heavily, well, two, are the apostolic and then that of a prophet, okay? It makes me a gatekeeper, it makes me responsible, and it means I have to talk about or address things that can be hard anybody you know you look around and go oh who's going to deal with that who's going to address that what's going on with here and that and you realize well wait a minute after decades for those of you who don't know i'm in my 50s so once you kind of get there you know i'm a grandma's age and so it's like oh my goodness now i'm the person in charge i'm the one who's got to handle this you know <laughs> you can't just go well who else is going to deal with this you're the one <laughs> if it's your business if you have a cleaning business if you have if you're the teacher in that classroom I also run emergent University we have professors and um, staff etc we are uh, accredited through oh excuse me we're fully chartered we have one and two year programs we actually legally license and ordain people into ministry our covenant partners pay for that so although there is a cost um, partners pay that for you. We find someone to pay your way. <laughs> if you're serious about it, check into signing up for this fall session that starts in August, okay? Yes, I threw my little clip in there. But anyway, um, if you're the person of the head of a thing or a family, if some kind of drama happens in your family, you take care of drama. You have to. You have to. Now, we're going to worship a little bit, and then we're going to get back into... The seriousness of some of these things and talk about that okay we're going to talk about that and I am going to adjust one of my cameras real quick I think I got something situated a little funny here today we had to move some things around so just bear with me while I get some of this resituated over here okay we're getting that resituated so bear with me my apologies for what have you think that helped I think it helped there we go thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus father God we seek your heart in all matters we're the people who are your hands and feet we're your mouthpieces in this world 
place where folks are lost and dying, but we seek your face to feel your love and extend it, God, to those around us. We're never alone. We can know what to do, and every hour of our day, when people look our way, we can say, Jesus, it's you that did this. Jesus, it's you who healed me, lifted me up, who set me on firm ground. See, when the world looks at us, we should look different. When the world looks at us, we should look different. We got Tiffany over there in Arkansas. Bless you, woman of God. William, we've got Carlotta in Louisiana. Bless you. That is such a beautiful name. Good morning, good morning. We've got Prophet Roger on here. Bless you, man of God. Y'all need to pray for him. He has uh, been awesome. He's been helping with the painting and everything. So praise God for that. It's getting done. We've got Christy over here. Bless you. If you're in a group on some of these social sites, it just says user. It doesn't tell me who you are. So if I don't call your name out, forgive me, okay? Thank you for the gifts, the stars, diamonds. Thank you for different things like that. Again, we are talking about Mark Driscoll, James River Church, John Lindell, etc. Okay, we're going to be talking about that today. We are the people who are a bright light. We are the people. Again, if something happens in your family, you have to be the one to step up and address it. There's a time to do things privately, and then there's a time where we're just going to talk about it. We're going to get this out of the way, right? Okay. I see some of you over there. Um, I can't read what you're writing because it's in Sanskrit. Okay? You're in, it's in Sanskrit. I don't read Sanskrit or um, whatever it might be. Okay? And honestly, some of it might not be... Sanskrit, it could be even um, Oriental languages. Okay. Bless you, Eddie. Who else is on here? Who else is on here? We are going to have prophetic words later. We've got Ephesians 6.12 on here in Colorado. Bless you. Come on. There's decent ways in order to do things. Now, when you are a prophet, you're on God's timetable. You're on God's timing. I'm going to turn this music off for now. I'm going to ditch the microphone. And we're going to get into some serious talk. Um, there has just been... I don't think there's mass confusion. There's certainly not mass confusion in the body of Christ. There are people who are trying to understand and comprehend. And I, the reason I'm addressing some of these things is so that people will understand the difference of when you can speak out publicly and when you should do something privately. What does it look like to speak publicly in an honorable way if you do address something um, and what would not be appropriate? Let's take families and children or neighborhoods. You know, because family, kingdom is family. Okay, so the church, kingdom, God made family and it's relationships. So no matter what level, whether business, family, ministry, it doesn't matter what it is, there should be relationships and kingdom is going to look like the authority God put within families because kingdom is families linking arms together to form larger corporate groups and to do great kingdom works, okay? And so the principles apply in every area of our lives. I've had, you know, Christians try to tell me, um, you know, that they do things like uh, my business ethics, you know, are separate from my Christianity. And I'm like, you have just stepped off the cliff. You are falling down a greasy slope, and it's going to be hard for you to come back from that. You need to repent. <laughs> okay. Um, but if we look at what occurred at um, James River Church, and again, the pastor of that is John Lindell. Okay. John Lindell. When you're looking at what went on there, for those of you who don't know, there was a men's conference, okay? There was a men's conference at that church. It's a mega church. It has like anywhere between 11,000 and 15,000 people at services, okay? Um, I mean, it's just huge, alrighty? So they have this big, giant 
men's conference. Um, and sometimes people go, well, why are you giving an input into this? You're a woman anyway. You wouldn't have been there. No, I wouldn't have because of my gender, because it was for men. I do get that. But because I do, I am over the emergence stream, which is, a, you know, various different churches. Some of them are different denominations. We've all come together because Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus is the truth, etc. cetera. Um, and I do need to address some things. I need to let people know where we, as the emergent stream, what do I stand for? You know, I stand for what God says. But I'm also a prophet, so I also know how God operates through prophets. Okay? So, the first day of this men's conference, a person, an ex-stripper, who is also into jiu-jitsu and some worldly things, got up on a change stage in a church. This isn't the world. This is the church, a holy place. God says, be holy as I am holy. Okay. All right. There's a lot of different spirits. There's only one Holy Spirit. So there's this pole. Poles are very significant in the Christian faith. In our relationship with Jesus, a pole, whatever you put at the top of that pole, is what you're serving. You better hear me on this. Bless you, Pastor Cecilia. Susie, bless you. Whatever you put at the top of a pole is what you believe and what you're serving. Everyone of the Christian faith. I'm not talking about people in the world. If you're in the world, you don't know that. If you put something at the top of a pole, well, then you're doing it by ignorance or just you just thought it looked cute at the top of the pole or, you know, the enemy could have been behind that. But we're talking about the church. Okay, we're talking about the church. This happened in a church. It's related to the church, the inner workings of a church. People of the Christian faith, especially pastors, apostles, the government of God, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, know a pole. And whatever you put at the top of a pole is what you're worshiping to. That's what you're bowing down to. And that's what you're saying you're submitting to. That men's conference started with a pole with a man who ripped his shirt off, stuck a sword we're supposed to have swords coming out of our mouth. This is so prophetic, it's not funny. Inverted, it went in. Now, spiritually, you're going to want the word of God to go in you, but according to scripture, that goes what? It goes into your mind, it goes into your heart, into your belly, and then comes out your mouth. It most assuredly don't go down your mouth. But again, people in the world don't know this, but this didn't happen in the world. This happened in the church. Leaders are held to a higher accountability. So there's a pole. And at the top of a pole is a half-naked man turned upside down with a sword down his throat. Hanging there. Hey, so that's how they started a men's conference. And wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. Not in my church, baby. Somebody come try to put a pole up unless you're going to put a banner that says surrender to Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ is Lord. I'll be, oh, we'll be hacking it down. All throughout scripture, it talks about the men and women of God, pastors who stood up, preachers who stood up, prophets who stood up, kings who stood up, queens who stood up, people who went out and they either put up Asherah poles, which is demonic, or they ripped them down. And the Asherah poles were put in the high seat. The high seat in a church is the platform or the stage. That is the altar. The most holy of holy places. That's why I'm careful who can preach from my pulpit besides me. That's how come I'm careful who can worship, lead worship, sing, play an instrument on that pulpit, behind that pulpit, on that stage, at that altar besides me. I got to know that I know you holy. That doesn't mean perfect. It means you're, you're saying, I want to be more like Christ. That's all it is. And you let God perfect you over time. What that is not is what that looks like, okay? That's inappropriate. Okay? So the church does not have world events on its platform. Number one, 
Okay. Now let's look at how Mark Driscoll handled that. Okay. Number one, if I was a man, I wasn't one of the guest speakers. Suppose I was a man. I'm not, but suppose I was. I am a prophet. Okay. And suppose I was going there as a man. Now, there's two different types of entry ways to get into that conference, right? You're a guest speaker. You work for that place. There's really more than one, but uh, so that's, there's more like three, okay? Well, so let's just break it down into four. You're either the person who runs it, the guest speaker, someone attending, or someone on staff. Let's just break it down into that, okay? Now, for me, if I was going to be there, and supposing I was a man, I would either be there as a guest speaker or I would be there as someone attending. Because that's not my ministry. I don't run it. I don't own it. I don't work for it. That's the only two places I would have an opportunity to be there. That means that's a door of access to that place. So Mark Driscoll had one of two common doorways of access to that ministry. A guest speaker. Or attending. If you are attending, you are sitting in the audience and you are observing and being taught. That means if you didn't like something, you cannot jump up and try to disrupt things. That would be dishonorable. You'd be arrested, thrown out. You don't have access to speak into that arena in that environment. But Mark Driscoll had access God had, what, given him a door of opportunity. Now, look at this. I'm not him. I prayed about this. I wasn't going to say nothing. I try not to get involved in any kind of drama going out and around in the church. And the Lord was like, you're going to address some of these things. And I was like, all righty then. Okay, yes, sir. When God says speak and you're a prophet, you speak, you open your mouth, you do what he says. And that is that. Okay? He's always right. So, I'm going to go back to supposing... Some of my experiences. There have been times that God gave me a door of access. He didn't give it to anybody else. He gave it to me. Okay? Why? Because can God trust you with his heart? And can God trust you to be a voice? We're going to get into a lot of these other issues associated with this. But we're, we're coming at it like this. So in places where I've had doors of access open to me. I have, in the past, gone places, prayed, saw things I didn't like, and God would not let me open my mouth. But then there's other times, nor would he let me address it, depending on what it was. Why? Because that meant he had someone else to do it. We all know in part. But there have been times I had door of access. I was one of the main people there, or someone was hosting me, and it was my own event. Who knows? And I saw something jacked up. Here's an example. I held a women's retreat. My own women's retreat at a lodge. The person who owned the lodge. This is a few years ago. Their son decided to put on what I'd call soft porn. In the sanctuary. Where we were considering our sanctuary. The gathering room. Do you understand what I'm saying? The main place where everyone gathers. And I walk in on that. We've already spent hours setting the atmosphere in that place. We're the only ones that's going to be there. Nobody was going to be there before us or after us during that time we were there. So we should be able to go set the atmosphere and then go finish getting dressed and come back, right? I've learned since then you leave staff on site. You don't, everybody doesn't get up and leave because we came back to on the big screen in the room we're fixing to open and worship is soft porn. I mean, it images, all kinds of stuff. I'm hearing strange noises as I walk in and I'm like, ah! you know, and I start going, where's the sound? You know, where's the thing? Where's it? You know, it's the projector. I got to get this shut off, cut off. Oh my goodness. And I find him, there's like a, I don't know, 11, 12 year old boy. I had to address that. I had to address that. There were people already coming in. I had to address that. It had to be dealt with immediately. Now, the person that was, you know, that was my event at that place, they weren't happy. They said, well, I let him watch things like that. I said, oh, no, not, no, 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 no. This doesn't happen at my event. We don't have this on the big screen. 
We don't have this. We had set the atmosphere. You need to address this. You need to deal with this. Okay, so some things you have authority over to address, other things you don't. Mark Driscoll had a door and a gate of opportunity. He was legitimately and legally allowed to be there. Okay, now this is also how God can work. So I'm kind of bringing you up to this. You may be going, why didn't he speak privately with that man? He had a you know, 30 minute window, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. This is how God works sometimes. There are times that something weighs on my heart and I'm like, what do I do in this situation? As a Christian, we don't do anything unless we seek God on that, generally, depending on what it is. We're like, God, what do you want me to do? Now, I'm not him. I don't know him personally. And I cannot say where, what went on between him and God unless God told me. Okay? But I can tell you this. You spend time in prayer and praying. He said he did that. There are times that you're in a situation and God says, now address it. He was legally allowed to be there. And he said, and, and besides, this isn't something that was done to him by John Lindell, the pastor of James River Church. This wasn't something that John Lindell did to Mark Driscoll. So he wasn't necessarily obligated to go and say, hey, 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 hey. This was something that was public and this and that. And once you're a guest speaker, because of honor, and you see something weird go on, you're kind of obligated to be there. But, I, you know, there's been times I've been invited to place. I'm like, okay, God, what do I do? When I've gotten there and things were jacked up out of order, I'm like, God in heaven, what do I do? And I can be honest, to, my, to this day thus far, there has not been a time where God said, tuck tail and run. <laughs> he said, you're going to open your mouth and speak and say what I say. I've been in situations before where I took the stage and I preached what God told me to preach and I knew as I preached it, the host was angry. They knew in advance the topic per se. But they just kept getting madder and madder and madder. And I'm like, well, that's, you know, <laughs> it's not on me. God gave me this door. I'm here legally and legitimately. I'm not dishonoring anybody. I'm preaching word. And it was a place that didn't like the word. I'm going to be honest. They didn't like it at all. And then I was supposed to speak again the next day. And the host told the other famous, very quite famous uh, pastors and, you know, and whatnot that I would no longer be speaking. <laughs> I was not allowed to have the stage. Someone else took the stage and he was supposed to speak his message. And this is what he did. He looked straight at the host and said, all right, I know this is my time to speak, but God just told me to give the microphone to Sister Tiffany. Here you go, woman of God. It was all being live streamed. So I got up and I took the microphone. <laughs> and I, I preached and said what God told me to say. Okay, and that person could have, the person who was over that church, that center, could have stood up and said, no, no, I don't allow that and taken the microphone back from me. If they had said, give me that microphone and go sit down, I would have done it. Because that's honor. They get to be as jacked up in their building as they want to be. I can't force you to let me speak. So one of the things I really liked that I showed maturity was Mark Driscoll when he was speaking. Okay, he didn't attack John Lindell personally. He said, this is what I have observed, meaning this is what I saw and what God told me it meant. Not what I think it means, what God says it means. Okay? He also, when he was told, you're done, it's done, you're over, it's over, it's done. What did he do? All right, yes. Okay. Because if he had continued speaking... He would have been out of order. 
once he was asked to stop, it would have been out of order. And he could have been what? The uh, uh, crack in the foundation for the enemy to come through. Not really foundation, more like a crack in the wall. And the enemy could have what? Grabbed or touched him. But because he was respectful when told to, you're done. Leave the stage. Okay, yeah. That's done honorably. Here's another thing that was done respectfully. When he took the stage, his heart was burdened. You could tell, like, you could tell the burden, the look, the, the what was going on with his face. Even emotions, but it was still spiritual, okay? Um, he didn't go out on the stage and start screaming accusations. So here's an example. Let's break it down into something tiny. I notice your, suppose I notice that you have, um, got your hands in poop somehow. And you walked throughout the house and you've wiped it on walls and curtains, your hair, your face, your clothes. Excuse me. Now, I can address that and say, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let's look. There's dirt on your hands. Do you realize this poop? It's really nasty. Let's, I'm going to help you try to get this off. If you'll let me, I'm going to help you. Let's, 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 let's do this. And, uh, maybe you don't realize what's going on, but it's bad and it stinks and... Okay, that person can say no. And you go, oh, okay. If it's their house. If it's your house, you get to say, get out. You can have that poop on your hands all day long if you want to have it on there. But you're not going to do it in here. Not here. Okay? So you got to see, where do you have legitimate authority? I don't have legitimate authority up in your house. I got authority in my house. So he couldn't have gone further with the message once he was told to stop. Or he'd have been out of order. Because that's not his house. But God gave him the opportunity of that door. He took that door of access. He had access when others did not. And so as a prophet of God, when God said, now address it, he had to address it. He may not have known, you know, and again, I'm not him and God didn't tell me. If God did, and believe me, a lot of times God will tell me what was in a person's heart, what their conversation was, and God didn't say, you know, and I also didn't spend time fasting and praying about it to seek God in that matter. But I'm just saying there have been times from personal experience, I know, that you never necessarily, you're just like, what on earth do I do? This is bad. This needs addressed. Do I address it? Is it for somebody else? What on earth? You wait till God, and then God says do, and you're like, you know in that moment, okay, get this. Mark Driscoll had to have known in that moment, although it would be temporary, it was going to cost him. Unless God hid that from him. There was only two things that was going to happen. Repentance. And a breaking forth of a great move of God. Turn from your wicked ways. If my people who are called by my name, it didn't say the world. We're this again, we're talking about the church. We're not talking about the world. Okay. It's one thing you expect stuff like that in the world, not the church. <laughs> Come on. So if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, you know, God will what pour out his spirit. Turn your life around, redeem you, restore you, revive you. Revival will break out in the land. Come on, God will save. He will, judgment will be paused. But if you hear what is right and you refuse to receive that, judgment comes. Judgment starts in the house of God. It's called exposure. When things are exposed, it is best to drop as quick as you can with your face on the floor. So when the fire comes, if your face is on the ground in a humble way of repentance, the fire destroys the devil and not the people and the person. But if you are standing there with pride and high and lifted up, and I don't mean, you know, we can worship God like this with our faces lifted. I'm talking more your heart. If your heart's lifted in pride, that fire's going to hit you on your head. And you're going to go down. There'll be consequences. Okay. So again, this was done decent and in order and respectfully. And again, with prophets, God sometimes, 
you know, doesn't tell you until he's like, open your mouth and speak and address. So when Mark Driscoll went in there, he didn't scream accusations. So go back to the scenario with someone with poop on their hands. If I walk up in your house and there's poop everywhere and on your hands and whatnot, I am going to mention that and just say, this is what God is saying this means. I'm not, now, if I walk into your house and say this, if I walk into your house and say, you're so dirty, you're so nasty, you're disgusting, you disgust me. It is unlikely, number one, you're going to listen to me. You're not going to take me seriously. And I've dishonored you and dishonored your house. Now, I am going to be under attack. I'm going to be what? God's going to come for me. <laughs> okay? God will come for you if you act dishonorably. But he didn't act dishonorably. Okay? And again, some people may be going, you're a woman. Why are you even doing an input on something that happened at a men's conference? Because I am a leader in the body of Christ and I am a prophet. I run my own stream, and we have men and women in this stream, and y'all need to know what is honorable and what is dishonorable and how to handle conflict and situations. He didn't get up there with a motive and an agenda to platform himself, Mark Driscoll, okay? He didn't get up there with an agenda to platform himself in order to undercut, demise, or destroy James River Church or John Lindell. Now, have I ever seen people in the body of Christ do that? Absolutely. I've seen immature people before. Even if they didn't understand what it was they did. You're so welcome, Christy. Carol, bless you. I've seen people take platforms in order, knowing in advance, I'm going to tear them down or rip them to shreds and expose them. Um, <laughs> that isn't God's heart, and that's not how God works. I can tell you this from being a main speaker at many different places. As a main speaker, the people who is the host generally, especially if they have multiple speakers on multiple days, they don't consult you with what shows or people or music or musicians or things or parking lot of stuff. They don't consult main speakers on any other aspect of the conference. You don't work for them. You're not on their staff. You're just brought in to speak. So it is unlikely that Mark Driscoll knew in advance, and again, I don't know, because I don't know him personally. No, you know. It is unlikely that he knew in advance, unless God showed him what was happening, what, you know, what they were going to do, like open the event with and that kind of thing. And part of that may have been they wanted to, well, that doesn't even describe it. I understand men are manly. What we saw was not even manly. <laughs> What was on that video was not even a manly thing. Like, uh, all I have to say is my sons or my spouse what, would not be doing that. You can be a man, but you ain't doing that. I will come for you if you're one of my sons or spiritual sons, and I will whoop you. I will discipline you. I will bring you before the Lord God Almighty. And we will cut that thing down. And we will get you freed set free and delivered in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Susie, thank you so much. Come on, I'm looking at some of these things. Some of the comments, thank you so much for participating in the video and commenting. And again, we want to make certain that we operate with honor. Now, with regards to John Lindell, how mega churches work. I have never worked for his church. I don't know all the inner workings. I have worked for more than one mega church. However, each one is different. But it is unlikely he was unaware that their opening vent was a half-naked man on a pole with a sword thing. It is unlikely he, that it took him by surprise. It is unlikely, and especially 24 hours later, a whole day later, he would have already had time to have gone, whoa, I want to issue an announcement. 
I want to issue an apology. We will get to the bottom of this. We will either fire that person or ask them to repent or everyone involved will go through some type of deliverance. <laughs> some type of deliverance. Come on. Amen. Amen, Diana. And again, I don't, I try to stay out of infighting any kind of that kind of stuff because again some of the people running around doing exposure are doing it wrong they'll go to a ministry on purpose to trash and rip it to pieces knowing in advance and not operating in the heart of god they recognize and even though they may be in that office and have that mantle they handle it wrong they go in with a hammer and a sword to destroy as opposed to give an opportunity for someone to repent yelling and screaming the anger of man according to scripture does not bring about the righteous life that god desires okay now let's look at what matthew 18 verse 15 says if your brother sins against you go tell him his fault between you and him alone and if he hears you you have gained your brother again just like i said earlier john lindell did not sin against Mark Driscoll. So it was not an issue between the two people. There was an issue. A prophet of God has a platform, a legitimate, he, he legitimately got there by Luke 2.52. He grew in favor and stature with God and with man. God elevated him to that position. Man agreed with God and let him in the door. Then he had the legal right to address what happened and because it wasn't between john lindell and mark driscoll he was not obligated to go and say hey you've offended me it was something done publicly it wasn't something you know like suppose um you know susie and i were hanging out okay and susie did something that offended me well i don't then need to go um to church in a ladies meeting and go you know Susie's not here today but let me tell you what happened the other day when Susie and I were out or Susie came over to my house boy how did she offend me she's got the worst blah 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 I have just stepped over into gossip and slander <laughs> there's a difference do you hear me there is a difference and he literally said as he began this Mark Driscoll said I, this is not a rebuke this is my observation, something that happened publicly, and I'm addressing and speaking. Come on. I, I'm just giving my observations. It means what God told him that meant, and that's what he said. He did mention principalities. He did mention demons. He did mention things. Here's the thing. You want to be heard. You want to have a platform. You want to have this. You want to have that. Let God, who's in charge of how many people you are designated to, how big your following and gathering can be, that goes for me, you, and everybody. Let God enlarge you. Excuse me. Let God open doors for you. God is the one. Come on. Who says that the heart of the king is in his hands and he'll turn it to the right or to the left. Wherever, just like a river, God can turn. God can easily turn someone with influence and authority to open doors for you or to slam them in your face. God allowed and put on that John Lindell's heart for him to invite Mark Driscoll. John Lindell's response is on him. If I'm a prophet and I go into a place and God tells me to open my mouth and address something, I'm going to do it decent and in order in an honorable fashion. Again, the anger of man does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. And if you're operating in anger, now you have a devil. A devil looks like it's attack. What? A devil is then what has your mouth. A devil is not going to cast another devil out. If you're operating in a demon spirit to cast demons out of a church, that's not going to be helpful. <laughs> At all. Come on. Somebody. We see that though. I, I'm telling you, some of the stuff I see in the deliverance world, the deliverance realm, you know, I walk in deliverance. I'm a deliverance minister. I don't do some of the crazy stuff I've seen people do. 
that is dishonorable, nasty, and disgusting. Please be wise. If you look at that and you get a check in your spirit, ask God about it. And let God direct your steps in your path. You have the right to be honored and to be safe. It, there is something wrong in the house of God if you could go into the house of God and be unsafe, dishonored, abused, and harmed in a place that should be a hospital operating in divine love. Think about it. We want to make certain that God's love is what flows from our minds, our mouths, our hearts, our will, our emotions, all of that. God's love needs all of that, all of us, right? If we love God with our whole soul, then we're going to be flowing in his desires. Rivers of living water will flow from our bellies. And again, Mark Driscoll, when he gave that word, okay, he didn't yell and scream at people. He did it honorably. And if you look at his face in the videos, you look at his face. The grieving. He's not angry. It is more of a weeping. I've seen people, God show them something. And I've even had that happen with my own self before and had to pull back. Where you get angry. Newsflash. God doesn't need our help defending his name or his honor. God is a big God. He's a big boy. He's got his big boy britches on. And he can defend and um, his own name and his own honor. He does not need my help to do it. <laughs> Nor yours. So there's no point in us getting angry. We are just to say what he asks us to say. Do what he asks us to do. Okay. I want to look very quickly. Okay. So we talked about gatekeepers being a gatekeeper. God will give you positions of authority that where you're a gatekeeper, you have access to address things. Again, doing it in a godly way. We have a responsibility as Christians, especially if you're a leader in a particular arena or a field, if you're one of God's government, an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, or a teacher, there are different jurisdictions you operate in where you do have authority in to address things. Okay? Um... Order, scripture, it needs to be on the word of God. He didn't do anything that violated the word of God. For anybody wondering. Um, when John Lindell, I can just tell you, I, I mean, I could tell. He seemed um, shocked, offended, <laughs> taken aback. And when people are shocked and offended, taken aback, just like you would be if you were shocked about something, sometimes things come out your mouth, you just grasp for something. And so, obviously, I don't believe he sought God on his answer. He just spouted that scripture out because when many ministers are backed against the wall and, you know, he, he could still repent. But I'm just saying, when oftentimes someone's first reaction is to fire back with something to legitimize what it is they've done. Because no one wants to be wrong. I mean, even if, well, not if, but when I'm wrong about things and I have to repent, and agree with God and say, yeah, that was jacked up. Sorry about that, Lord. You never really want to be wrong. Raise your hand if you enjoy being wrong. You love being wrong. And you think that's just the greatest thing. Not, not. No one wants to be wrong. So I understand where he's coming from. But may his eyes open, his ears unstop, his heart be tender to the things of God and repentance come. You know, we're told in the word that even the elect could be deceived. Now, I don't know John Lindell. I haven't spoken with him. I haven't, I really have never followed the man. I didn't seek God to say, oh, is he saved? You know, I'm not even getting into that. We're going to assume that at some point that that occurred. Okay. And if it didn't, then we say, Lord, get him saved. But if he is, then repentance come in Jesus mighty name. God have mercy and let repentance come, right? Because anyone in a high position of influence, if you make a mistake, that's me, that's you. If we make a mistake, 
then other people will stumble and fall. We don't want to be the stumbling block for others to stumble and fall. Like I reach millions of people a week to millions of people a day. So what I say, my voice carries weight. And God told me, he said, if you are silent in this, that sends a message. Is that what you want? And I said, no, I'm going live. <laughs> I'm going live, sir. I will address this in Jesus' mighty name. Let's go for it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you know? um, is it ever enjoyable for to address conflict? I, it, the more times you address conflict, you practice it. You begin to learn how to address conflict in better and better ways, okay? it It's not like you wake up going, oh, let's have conflict. You know, it's not that. Um, it becomes more manageable, not fearful. You don't run from it. You're like, oh, you know, in the past I'd have been like, oh, oh, oh. And now it's like, okay, let's just address this and move on. The quicker I address this, then I'm obedient. You know, that kind of thing. And so it doesn't bother you like it would if you're just in the beginning phases of learning how to lead, to manage, to address conflict or issues in a godly way. Anytime you address something and you do it in a way that dishonors another person, what God has built through them, it's inappropriate, okay? What are some other things I put in here that we're going to address? We did some scripture. How honor works in the kingdom. We talked about that. Opinions don't matter. Let me say that again. My opinion, your opinion, our opinions don't matter. It's good to hear a person's opinion sometimes because if they get their opinion out, then their own ears will go, oh, it's made so much sense in my head. But then now that I've spoken it out, that's stupid or that's weird or that doesn't even make logical sense in any way, shape, or form. And I'm like, yeah, glad you saw that, baby, because that ain't right. <laughs> so glad, so glad, you know. Um, but that's happened with me before. I'm thinking something is so legit, so legit, and I'm, I'll run that by my staff, and I go, I'm using y'all as a sounding board because I need to know once it comes out my mouth, this is legit or it's a lie from the devil. I'll say it, and I'm like, oh, Really? This, 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 and this make that so wrong. And my staff goes, yeah. And I go, wow, that was the enemy. Because in my head, that made so much sense. I'm so glad I used y'all as a sounding board before implementing that. <laughs> Come on now. So we are going to get into some personal prophecy and prayers uh, near the end because y'all need prayer. Maybe you have bis been dishonored. Maybe you've had terrible things happen to you. Well, I want to tell you some things that did happen to me. Here is an example. Okay, I'm going to give y'all an example of how to talk about something to share with people to where you don't bring offense, you don't poison other people, you don't poison yourself, others. Um, you don't defame people who could have since repented. Even if God didn't tell you they repented, they might have. So I'm this is going to be an example of how you can talk about your testimony without defaming, demising other people or causing people in the body of Christ to choose sides. Number one, do not mention the church, the ministry, the business, or what have you. If you need to mention things like that, then it needs to be so bad that you've gone to the police or you're covering. And let those who have the authority to stop it get involved. Okay? Um, you do have a right to be safe. If someone tries to rape you in the church, that shouldn't... Number one, that should never be going on in the house of God. Right? If something like that happens, you should call the police. Okay, and the reason I'm going to say that is because some of the churches have gotten so worldly that they do nothing about it or they just tell that person, you need to go and repent. I, you, you, I have seen some stuff in the house of God. If it's illegal in the world, it's illegal. You hear me? Rape's illegal. Rapists are hiding up in the church house and that needs to stop. Okay, that just needs to stop. Now, that's just one example. I have not been raped in church, but I'm just saying. Um, 
there was a situation where I was a guest speaker. Okay, I was a guest speaker. I went somewhere. I had already done my ministry altar time. There was more than one guest speaker that evening. And this was a very private setting. Only a certain amount of people could get in. Okay. And um, <clears throat> so I did the altar call for my part. I stepped over, being honorable, stepped over to the end of the altar on one side. Okay. And let the next minister have the altar so they people could come to them. That's how the they had asked us to do it that evening. So I stepped off to the side and the host had people that worked for them. Interns. Two interns. One was probably 19. One might have been 24. One of them grabbed me on my right arm. One grabbed me on my left arm. Yanked me from the sanctuary down a dark hallway and threw me in a lighted room. I'm on my hands and knees and God says, wait for it. The door, they thought they shut it. It's not. And I remember I'm on my hands and knees and I look and the door isn't shut. It was open just enough for somebody skinny like me to slide right through. And the Lord said, when I tell you to go, you run and you take off for that sanctuary hard and grab somebody. And I was like, oh my goodness. I knew that they were going to rape me. Do you hear me? They were foul-mouthing me, calling me whore, calling me all kinds of foul names. And I heard the Lord say, go! They, it was like they froze. No joke, they froze. I leaped up enough to run out that door, and I was down that hallway, and I, I literally interrupted the altar call and grabbed hold of the, <laughs> one of the other guest speakers and was like, huh? And he's like, what is it? What's going on? And of course... I lowered my voice. I explained what was going on. And he goes, you don't ever go to the edge again. You need to stay over in the middle somewhere. Don't ever go off. What on earth? But it was never addressed. I had to go. I tried to address it with the host. They wouldn't listen, wouldn't have anything to do with that. They, uh, I had to go over their head. And still nothing was done about it. Okay. So ever since then, I have taken armor bearers with me everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. You got to be careful even up in the church house. Now, you don't know what country that took place in. You don't know what city, what state. You don't know the church. You don't know the ministry. You don't know the people involved nor any of their names. That is how you give a proper testimony about something that was negative that happened in your life without causing the body of Christ to take sides. You don't know whose side to take because you don't know any of the people involved. You can't then be offended at somebody else. I now have not, I haven't caused you to be offended or take up the offense. Okay, and that was a long time ago. Many, many, many years ago. Now, Here's another example, a second example, okay? Um, someone decided they didn't like me, only know me, knew me for less than three weeks and decided they hated me and um, that happened to be a man and they told millions of people and then thousands of people began to attack me. I do mean thousands. Thousands of people went after me and my family, my kids and even my siblings. It was bad. It was bad, okay? Right after that, within, I don't know, three to five months after that, let's see, five to seven months after that, uh, I went to a conference with all of my whole entire group, my church, my staff, my everybody. Someone working under another man, that was like his right-hand man, Walked up to me during the altar call time. Okay, we were at the back. And began to prophesy over the microphone, but he wasn't prophesying. He was bad. Pointed his finger. Began to call me uh, a Jezebel. Witchcraft. I'm not sure if he used the word witch. At this point, I'm like, I, um, we have just come to this conference with like a whole group of people and I don't even know what, what. And so that's not even who I am. People who know me, they're just like, <laughs> okay. 
And he just went off on a tirade and wouldn't stop. Telling me that I better get on my hands and knees. I better crawl to the altar. Better get to the altar, however he worded it. And I better repent of all that witchcraft and uh, Jezebel and blah, 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 blah. And I think he even said something about my mama. I mean, at this point, I'm like, did he just, what? <laughs> Do you know everybody got up? We took up either two or three rows. Everybody got up except for two women and went to the whole other side of the church. And I had to rebuild my team. Because of somebody working for a famous man and people assumed his voice had to be true. I'm telling you, garbage can happen in the church. We got to make certain as men and women of God, we prophesy by the spirit of the Lord. So we're not damaging and hurting people. It took years for people to come back and apologize for that one. And I don't mean the people who did that. They didn't apologize. To no one, they, they never apologized to me. So, you know, sometimes you got to keep living life and forgive and let go. Okay. I'm talking about the people who got up that had been a part of me and they went somewhere else. It took some of them years to come back and say, I'm sorry. I realize now that that wasn't legit. <laughs> okay. Um, and then a few months after that. So when the enemy hit me, he hit me. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Because that's what the devil does. Sometimes you think, oh, the woman of God, she never really has much. She may be having some warfare, feeling some oppression from principalities, but what's it really doing? And these are the types of things that I've had to deal with. Some of you have had to deal with things like this on your job or in school. But I'm in full-time ministry, so it shows up in the ministry realm. Okay? And so another time, just a few months after this, because it was back-to-back -back hits, someone who reached millions of people, told their followers, or tens of thousands anyway, told their followers on multiple platforms that I was a witch. Couldn't be trusted. All kinds of other things. Um, and got in league with what looked like 15 plus pastors and they all began to assault me. And my relatives. My family members. My children, my siblings. So many of you have wanted to know why a few years ago I stopped sharing anything. Anything at all about my family and children. That's why. That's why. Things like that. And see, pastors, ministers, evangelists, the government of God, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors and teachers... We need to be trustworthy. We definitely bring order, baby. The house of God is not going to be unruly. But with God's love and heart, it's how you handle those situations that count. The anger of man does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. And anything that hurt you and wounded you, you have to get over it. Now, today you may be thinking, are y'all asking me to pick sides? You want me to pick sides between these two people? Mark Driscoll and John Lindell or what have you? I'm asking you to recognize that people aren't perfect. People can make mistakes, even if it's temporary. Could be permanent. I hope not. <laughs> but I tried to explain to you what was done honorably And I can honestly say, I do not on a personal level know any of those people. Okay? I know what God has told me and then I know what I saw, what I heard, how it was done. Okay? Again, you can tell somebody, you've lied to me without saying, you liar! Okay, no one with a microphone in the church should be pointing fingers in people's faces, calling them witches, whores, Jezebels. <laughs> Those are spirits that a person can be operating in and they not realize it. Addressing a demon is one thing, but doing something that could potentially harm and damage another person, we got to make certain as leaders, that's me, that's you, that we don't do things like that. Okay. Now I'm going to shut down all of the streams except for you can jump over there on um, Instagram and 
yeah, Instagram and Facebook. I'll also be over there on LinkedIn, X, YouTube. So um, we're going to shut down TikTok and Clapper. If you're on TikTok and Clapper and you want to be on some of our other sites, just go ahead and jump over. But now's the time we're going to pray and we're going to get into prophetic words, personal prophetic words. Okay. Personal prophetic words. That's what we're going to do, you guys. Bless you. And some of these sites I'm pur purposefully, um, especially today with what I was talking about, I purposefully didn't look at some of their comments because I thought, you know what? <laughs> We're just not going to go there. We're just not. <laughs> We're just not going to go there. <clears throat> this is our morning word program. Okay, this is our morning word program. Let's see if I can now move and situate this a little bit differently. Y'all hang on just a minute. There we go. There we go. So who all is on here? Drop some comments so that I know you're on here and so that we can talk today. I want to be able to give you some prophetic words of encouragement or if you have a prayer request. Hey, Amen. I love what someone said here. That is why we always need to be praying for the saints. Carol, bless you. Annette, bless you, woman of God. Oh, bless you. Amen, Christy. Amen. And you know what? I received that, and, and I forgive those people, you know. And again, anybody, especially the part where they drug me down a hallway and into a room, um, you got to think their ages, 19 and possibly 24. Young people who can repent, who hopefully won't stay that way. Bless you. Bless you, Pastor Shannon. Love you, woman of God. Love you. Okay, you need, okay, financial breakthrough. Come on, financial breakthrough. Bless you and good morning, Tiffany. Bless you. So financial breakthrough. Anybody on here, drop it me in the chat. I'm going to pray for everyone that needs right now um, financial breakthrough, okay? If you need financial breakthrough, just drop a me in the chat. You're going to be included in this, and we're speaking financial breakthrough over you. Father God, we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hey! To make a way where there seems to be no way. To open up the fountains of heaven. The windows of heaven. Let blessings come and flow. They have been being um, uh, wise with their money. They've been tithing. Sowing offerings. The people of God. I've seen this throughout. So many people being faithful. And then not seeing what they know they should be. We say and decree and declare. Let, that you God are not a liar. Your word says that when we sow our tithes and our offerings. That those windows of heaven open. And for a blessing. That we, our barns can't hold and receive it. We don't even have enough barns to hold and receive all that. It's more than enough. It's overflow. And so, God, we thank you for overflow. Regardless of what we see in the natural. Any devils from hell that's in our way that has built demonic dams right now in the river of provision and flow over any of the people right now who say they are needing financial support right now in Jesus' mighty name. Let those demonic dams be dissipated, be uh, ripped apart. Come on. And all of those, what we would call baby beavers, and this is just a, a visual analogy. Come on, just a visual analogy of what's going on spiritually. <clears throat> Come on, that whatever's hindering the finances to come that's demonic is dissipated now and it is annihilated in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we thank you that you are showing us spiritually. And we thank you also that you are showing us naturally what those beavers or baby beavers, all that stuff, that damn what it can represent in the natural. God, we thank you. I want somebody to put their hands on their head. I want you to put your hands on your head. God, we thank you for divine ideas right now. Divine ideas. We receive your divine ideas. We receive divine strategies. You have given us the ability to create wealth, to get wealth, to hold and manage wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18, for your glory and not our own glory. We are yours and yours alone, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. We just bless you right now, Lord God. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Diana, I'm just speaking right now. Um, it's like you've got a skillet on a fire on a stove, but the fire is turned down really, really, really low. And God's going to heat it up. He's heating it up because he's got good food to give you. And it's like when the fire gets hotter and it begins to sizzle and the smell goes out into the room, the aroma of the Lord is rising. There is food in your house, food for you and food for you to share. And I decree and declare right now that is spiritual and that is natural. And we turn the flame up on that stove. Father God, we thank you that you turn the fire up all around us, that we are being infused with your glory, that we are speaking and doing everything you want us to speak and do for your purposes and Decent and in honor in Jesus' name. Decent and in order. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Amen, amen, amen. Who else has another prayer request? Who else has another prayer request? Evangelist Afzel. I see you and your wife, and I just decree and declare right now that there are angels surrounding y'all. There is high angelic activity where you are. There is provision for all of your needs. There is not a place of loss, but provision. There's, again, not a place of loss. I just want to decree and declare that right now. You are not having loss. You are not having loss. You are not having loss. Come on. You are not having loss. You are having increase and multiplication. It is increase and multiplication in Jesus' mighty name. I speak that y'all are healthy. I speak that you have food multiplying in your pantries. That we speak that the moth and the worm does not attack what belongs to you. That the blood of Jesus is applied to all of your whole household. And the enemy must pass over and pass by in Jesus' name. Pray for your wife. Father God, we just thank you right now. We thank you that his wife is healed whole from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in Jesus mighty name wow come on Tiffany you know what we just speak right now father God we just love you we bless you I thank you for Tiffany right now Tiffany I see you in a glory cloud I see you in the presence of the Lord. You know, his glory is all around you, but I'm also seeing the enemy trying to grab hold of you in different areas and places. And you have had to fight to remain in the glory cloud. You've had to fight to remain there, but we command every demonic tick because that's what it looks like. It looks like a spider or a tick, more like a tick. Every tick, every deer tick, every, I don't care what kind of spiritual thing it is, it looks like a tick. Those things are not going to get at you. They're not going to find you. That they are stopped by the glory of God and killed by the blood of Jesus. We speak and command that they fall dead now in Jesus' name. And that means they lose their influence over you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Shannon, Pastor Shannon, woo, come on, I see you with the word of the Lord, I see you affecting this next generation, um, and I see you imparting wisdom into their minds, wisdom, Okay, um, it's, I'm going to be honest, because that's how God has made you to be. It's sharp, because it's a sword. It's the word of the Lord, and it's sharp. It's blunt, to the point. But that's what it needs to be. 
because the time of all the bells and whistles that don't make sense, that are just flowery overflow of meaningless nothingness and a bunch of empty words is over. And so, Father God, we thank you uh, that Pastor Shannon, you know, I see that word and it was like you just were just bop on people's head, bop, 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 bop. But you weren't beating them over the head with the word because then that would be boom, boom, boom. It wasn't like that. So you were imparting wisdom. You're imparting the word. And may that sword of the Lord go in and do what it is supposed to do, Pastor Shannon, in the lives of those people right now in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. Bless you, bless you. Bless you. Love you, Tiffany. Bless you. Bless you. Father God, we just thank you for Fayez, Pastor Fayez. And we just... um. I'm seeing what looks like um, military guns and things spiritually around you. Anything not of God, anything where the enemy's trying to come for you and harm you and yours or your fold, your uh, your flock, the people you're connected to, we command every gun of the enemy, because it's what I see, be bent and it returned. That demonic fire that was coming for y'all is going to backfire and it's going to go right back at the enemy in Jesus' name. And may y'all be hidden under the blood and in the glory cloud in daddy's front shirt pocket, so to speak. May you be hidden under the robe of Jesus. You be hidden from the eye of the enemy. May God cause your enemies to be at peace with you. You know, God tells us when our ways please him, he will cause even our enemies to be at peace with us. Jesus' name. So we decree and declare our enemies are at peace with us because our ways please you, O oh God. And God, we repent for anything we've done that displeased you. Was it lying? Was it stealing? Was it doing something like that? Father God, whatever it was, maybe it was worse. Maybe it was adultery. Who knows? Father God, we repent of whatever that was that displeased you. And we now decree and declare, especially if you were sinning five minutes ago, five days ago, five years ago, whatever it was, you've laid that down, you've repented. Father God, we thank you that our ways please you. And because of that, you cause even our enemies to be at peace with us. People who hated you no longer hate you. They don't even know why they didn't like you. And now they dislike you. They like you. And they don't even know why. They don't even care though. Because they're just, God's given them a heart for you and not against you in Jesus' name. They have gone and now they're, instead of them trying to demise you, now they're, you know, sometimes being at peace with your enemy means they're no longer focused on you. God's got them focused on something else because you no longer sound or look like them. Sometimes it's our fault they came after us and sometimes it's not. Downloads from heaven come on in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we thank you for Carol. We thank you right now that divine downloads are coming. You know, I see ribbons with words, English words, ribbons with uh, what looks like Hebrew letters and words, just ribbons of information, gold of this information, ribbons of... um. It's gold, there's silver, there's red, there's purple, there's all these different colors. And none of it is tangled. It's all intertwining, but it isn't tangled. Meaning, as soon as that is in, and it is, it's in you, Carol. It, God will begin to unpackage it. It will come out and flow out naturally. You just have to pick up the pen and begin to write. Go to the computer and begin to type. Go to a platform, whether it is with one person, two people, you know, whatever realm of influence God gives you, five people that you're going to be speaking to, or 5,000 people, 5 million people, come on now, that God will what? That it will flow out of your mouth because it isn't a tangled mess, but it is all packaged, but it will unpackage. And all of those ribbons of information for God's glory and purposes are coming out, Carol. This is your time and your season to run with the things of God. God is opening doors for you that no one can shut. He's giving you wisdom to know which doors are open to you and which ones look open but are shutting off limits because God said no. You'll know. 
you will know in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Healing and a godly husband right now. Father God, we thank you for our healing. Healing. Healing in Jesus' mighty name. And a godly husband. We thank you for this woman of God. That a godly husband comes forth in Jesus' mighty name. And you, Jesus, are their first love and their, you know, what we call the first husband, the, the husband, you know, the one we're with for eternity and forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Carol. Amen. Pastor Cecilia, I speak a blessing on you, woman of God. You are whole and you are healed. And every time the enemy has come at you in these word curses, we send that right back to the sender, which is the devil and not people. Those people are forgiven. Again, we command witchcraft to cease in Jesus' mighty name. You have favor with God and with people. Luke 2.52. And so it is. We command that favor to show up. God, we believe you. We do not believe the enemy. Let doors of opportunity open now in Jesus' name. Greater wealth stores come available in Jesus' name. Michelle, we speak right now that Pastor Jameson is healed of cancer. Healed in Jesus' name. Cancer submit and fall down to the ground. I just see it falling, shrinking, sloughing off. I don't even know what kind of cancer he has, but that's what it is looking like. And we curse that thing at the root and we speak blessing and wholeness and healing to his body in Jesus' name. Jesus already took that cancer, that curse. Pastor Jameson is not cursed in Jesus' name. Father God, if there's anything he needs to repent for or to a person he needs to forgive, we come and repent on his behalf and we forgive those people on his behalf. We stand in the gap. And, oh, Lord, we thank you. And he veil on his eyes is ripped off and his ears are unstopped. If at any time um, the enemy has tried to get in his way between you, oh, God, and Pastor Jameson, in Jesus' name. Brain. You said it was brain cancer. Well, we command that to uh, shrivel up and die and go. He's got the mind of Christ, and Christ don't have cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hey! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For some of you, um, you may not know this, you know, I was told I was sterile. <laughs> I had nine to eleven things they had written on that piece of paper, and any one or two of those makes you sterile. You know, but the enemy evidently was like, you know what, just in case, we better, we better just throw the whole book at her to where she can't ever. <laughs> All I ever wanted to be my whole entire life. Every time people would ask me, what do you want to be, a mother? No, 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 you can't say that. Stop writing that down on a piece of paper. You either have to be a nurse or a police officer, firefighter, doctor. You got to do something like that. No, I'm a mother. I want to be a mother. No, we said you can't do that. Women don't do that anymore. That's what school said. That's what our school said. Even in the church, they were like, no, 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 you can pick a career, do something else. I said, a mother. God said, I'm going to be a mother. So, of course, that's where the enemy took, attacked me. But I'm telling you now, I birthed seven children. Six of those are alive. They're in their 20s and 30s mostly. Come on. God can do it. God's amazing. He's awesome and wonderful. I had rheumatoid arthritis. It was medically documented. I had it. I had the markers for the disease for 20 plus years. Then I had it. And then... It's been medically documented that God healed me. God will heal you, save you, and keep you. Come on, Melissa, Jess, Michelle, Carol, Annette. God has kept you for such a time as this. God has kept you for such a time as this. Jess, God has kept you for such a time as this. Hey! You were called to be that light and to bring Christ in the world, everywhere you go. You're stepping foot in arenas that people said, you'll never go there. There's been people who prayed against you and said, they, I, I disallow them going there. But I'm telling you now, God will let you in anywhere he wants you to be in because he'll give somebody over their head to give you permission 
to come in. Do you realize how many times that's happened? Other people will be like getting in front of me going, you can't do that. And then God goes above their head. And somebody they're connected to that has a, a way to trump whatever they say comes and says, hey, come here. God's told me awesome things about you. I want you to come and pre speak and preach. I want you to do whatever. Come on. Come on. That's what God's doing in this season. Luke 2.52, favor with God and with men. God is trumping. Pastor Shannon, God is trumping their voice. He's bringing in a higher gatekeeper who's going to say, ah, come. And the other ones cannot keep opening their mouths. They cannot. They're going to have to remain silent and like it or lump it in Jesus' mighty name. Woo! In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, that's our portion, Carol. That's right. Come on, somebody. That is our portion in Jesus' mighty name. Who else is on here that needs prayer or you would like a prophetic word? If God gives me that. Let's see. Christy. Christy. Um, I'm, I'm just seeing. Amen, Shannon. Christy, I'm just seeing so many. Um, I'm seeing pink. And not like fleshly pink. I mean beautiful, soft pink, like feminine. Like Jesus saying, I'm in love with you. And, and I'm just seeing the Lord's love for you pouring out. And, and it's a vial of oil, but it's like frankincense, so infused, and it's myrrh. And, and so God's fragrancing you. You smell beautiful. And then that myrrh is a painkiller. God's removing the pain of the past. And I see this pouring and pouring and pouring out. And now he's he's putting in some spike nerd. And I, I'm just seeing this golden incense. This is so beautiful. So beautiful. And it's God's love for you. And I see you surrounded by this beautiful glory cloud. And you're not alone. God has never abandoned you. You know, there have been some who've said that you're not experienced in the ways of the world, the things in the world, and you can't possibly comprehend the things that some people are going through. And you know what? That's not true. That's not true. Um, even if you'd never experienced things, God can allow you to know what's in people's hearts, know what they went through. And so God is the one who gave this ability for you to minister to people. And God is the one who tells you information about people and you don't have to have experienced everything they went through to be able to minister to them. And so we speak that any form of dishonor, Christy, coming your way, we bind that and we toss it away. We command it to be destroyed and blown away like chaff. And we also command restitution to be paid to you, Christy. Restitution to you and your husband. Restitution to your family. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father God, we love you. We thank 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 you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. You guys. Well, if I can get this to situate itself. Hang on a minute. Let me put that back right there again. For those of you watching, um, Bless you, Melanie. Love you. Love you, woman of God. Your children and grandchildren, blessings to them and at peace in Jesus' name. Healing for your young daughter. Any thyroid problems, we command those thyroid issues to stop and to cease. We command that thyroid to line up now. As Jesus is in heaven, so are y'all in this earth, and Jesus doesn't have thyroid problems. He has a perfect thyroid. Jesus created perfect thyroids. I have perfect organs in my body, and so do y'all. Now, are you going to fight for it and decree and declare that regardless of what your body says? My body will line up to the sound of my voice because my I voice what Father God says is true about me. And so truth, my body will line up to truth. Your body will line up to truth. Your body doesn't have, her body doesn't have thyroid issues of any kind in Jesus' name. There's no blood pressure problems in Jesus' name. Woo-wee, woo-wee, woo-wee. Y'all, I've got to run and paint. 
Um, Prophet Roger has been here, drove from another state, and he's been um, staying out in the church, and he's been painting, 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 painting. So all glory to God for that. So y'all pray for him and his strength and all that kind of stuff and travel, etc. Um, but we also do need funds because we're going to need more paint. <laughs> and I'm also going to need, I need... Um, Probably eight nine hundred dollars worth of I need sheetrock and insulation because in a couple of weeks someone has volunteered to give us their labor for free. We need to pray, pay for their travel back and forth, and we also need to obviously we have to have hundreds of dollars worth of sheetrock and insulation available to them so they can do it for free. Okay, um, and we need to feed them, so we need funds asap. We need it right away, urgently. And for those of you that God is prompting right now and you want to sow into this ministry, please do so. For those of you who normally sell your tithes and offerings on a regular basis, thank you so much. Those of you who partner with us monthly, thank you so much. And I love you, I honor you, and I can't wait to see you back here in the morning, okay? So I love y'all, and we will chat with you later. Go to TiffanyBlackwell.com. It takes credit cards and debit cards, sometimes PayPal for some people. Um, you can also use RosePetals4400 at gmail.com in PayPal. Cash App or Zelle, rosepetals4400 at gmail.com. You can use tiffanyblackwell.com. No, I'm sorry, tiffany at tiffanyblackwell.com. Tiffany at tiffanyblackwell.com in Venmo. You can also snail mail us, Tiffany Blackwell Ministries, 127 East Highland Drive, Brookhaven, Mississippi, 39601. Checks, money orders, etc. We love you guys. There's our prayer request lines as well. And be praying for us. Be praying for us also, especially after putting out the message like I did today. Okay, especially after doing that. Not everybody is thrilled, you know, with women preaching, speaking, giving an opinion about something. And again, it's not my opinion. It's what God says is. And his is what matters. Okay, what he says is what matters. Oh, bless you, Eunice. Bless you. Thank you, Pastor Shannon. Thank y'all so much. Don't forget our also our Mississippi Fire Conference, June 7th through the 9th, the Mississippi Fire Conference. Check out our timelines, Tiffany Blackwell or Tiffany Blackwell Ministries, for photos of how the painting is going. Um, we've done so much. Also, Prophet Roger dug that whole ditch in like 20 minutes on the whole left side of the building. I had done in front and off to the right, and y'all know it took me hours. I'm thinking it was taking, it took a couple of days, actually, of several hours each day. I mean, I was like, <gasps> okay, I'm going to be honest. He just, boom, 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 dump, and I was like, so to go get the supplies, get it dug, think about it, throw it in, dispose of the extra dirt and trash, less than two hours. I was like, and I was like, well, I hate to be kind of jealous. I'm not, but I'm like, just so you know, this took me days and that took you 20 minutes. And if you count the supplies and throwing away the trash and the extra dirt, less than two hours. I'm like, but that's the difference between men and women. You know what I'm saying? So at any rate, Thank y'all so much for those who have sown into, again, getting the church up to where it needs to be, what it needs to be. Now, the conference is free. The Mississippi Fire Conference is free. If you're one of our graduates, do not forget that you need to submit um, your graduation fee. I will uh, let you know about that. Again, the conference is the 7th through the 9th. Um, I do like people RSVPing, um, not because I'm, you know, not saying you're not welcome. It's so I know how much food to buy. Because before conferences, we have finger foods. After conferences, we have finger foods. We have lunch. We have supper. I like to feed people. And then sometimes we do go to a restaurant or something. But for the most part, we do it here. Fellowship. Because we can control the fellowship. I don't have to worry about someone going, y'all are too loud. What are you doing? Did they fall down and get hurt? You know, I remember being in a Panera Bread one time and the... Um, the employees, they saw a woman coming near us. She was coming to attend. As soon as she, I turned around and she caught my eyes, it's the, it's the anointing. All of us turned and looked at her, whether it's my eyes or everybody or the group, the corporate group. When she caught and our eyes all locked with hers, she just goes, ah, she wilted. So we jumped up and laid hands on her. Here comes the employees. Oh, my goodness, do we need to call the ambulance? And I'm like, 
no, everything's fine. And they're like, what? And I said, we're just praying. So that's why it is so awesome for you to be able to what? To get to know your family. By what? We're providing you. You get to come here and you don't get to spend a lot of money on food. You know, there's no reason you can't be here. Invest in your gas money or your hotel or what have you and get here to the Mississippi Fire Conference. The next one is June 7th through the 9th. Come on, you guys. And again, we want to be so much further along with this to where I don't have to tell people, hey, bring a camping chair. Eventually, we're going to get it to where it is, you know, decked out and equipped, just like the prayer house is. You know what I'm saying? Decent and in order, godly and kingdom. Hallelujah. Because God isn't broke, and he's not dirt poor. And neither are we. Neither are you. In Jesus' mighty name. Love you guys. We'll chat with you later. See ya. And I appreciate those words of encouragement that y'all keep dropping in the inboxes and texting me with. I love y'all. And I'll chat with you later. See you guys.